Hey YouTube, this is the first of a series of videos that I'm going to be making showing you how to design, develop and manufacture a printed circuit board. For this we're going to need to use a computer program called Circuit Wizard. There are other options available, however this is the one that I know how to use and the one that I own. and it is developed by a company called New Wave Concepts. I believe you can buy this from Maplin Electronics at an RRP of I think it's £90 for the professional license which is fully functioning version. There is a standard version however this is limited in features and for the extra I think it's about 25 30 pounds I really would recommend getting the full version so first of all we need to decide what we're going to design and I think for the purpose of the, these tutorials a simple 555 timer circuit will be uh, sufficient so we open the gallery up here we first need a power supply and you simply click the component you want and drag and drop it onto the uh, drawing canvas or page. Then we need a switch. I'm going to be using a single pole single throw on off switch here. <coughs> we need some resistors. First of all the standard resistor, a variable or preset resistor and we'll need a capacitor. This is a polarized component, which means it's essential you connect it up the right way round. As you can see here, there's a little plus on the circuit symbol, and when we connect it up, you'll see that uh, it's connected up the right way. Then we will need a 555 timer, which is an integrated circuit. This is what drives the circuit, if you like. This is what uh, causes the LED to flash. We'll need a resistor to protect the LED and of course we'll need the LED itself. Then to connect these up it's simply a case of hovering over your component when it's selected click and drag and join the wires up. Oops, there we go. It's very simple to use and it's uh, very useful for not only drawing circuits, which I'm doing now, but also for testing circuits, which I'll show you a little later in the video. So I'm just connecting them up how they need to be connected for the circuit. You can obtain circuit diagrams all over the internet. So if you've got something particular in mind and you're not quite at the stage of developing your own circuits, then circuits like this as stable circuit are available on the internet and can be inputted into a program like this. The next thing we need to do is change the values of the components. So we simply do this by double clicking the component and I want a 5k resistor there so I type 5 and it's already selected to kill ohms. You can move this up to mega ohms or down to ohms or milli ohms or micro nano or pico ohms. Um, but for this we're going to use kill ohms. So go OK. Uh, the capacitor's fine as it is and this resistor can be 680 ohms. Okay. Now I said earlier about the polarity of the capacitor. As you can see this is the positive of the battery so it's convention to draw circuits from left to right with the battery on the left and the circuit on the right of course and with the positive being at the top of the diagram and the negative or zero volts if you will at the bottom of the diagram. As can be seen the positives at the top and it's going down here to the positive of the capacitor and the negative or naught volts, there we go it says negative, 
is coming down to the not volts of the battery. Oops, I've just realized I missed out pin one. <laughs> there we go. And all we need to do now is test it. So to do this, we click this little play button here. And when we press the switch, hopefully, with any luck, the LED will flash. And indeed it does. We can adjust how fast the LED flashes by clicking this and we can make it flash slower or we can make it flash quicker. And that's it folks, thanks for watching. The next video in this series will be how to convert this circuit diagram to a printed circuit board layout.